When people ask me what I like best about cans, I hardly know where to start. It's good for the consumer. It's good for the manufacturer. It's good for the product. But when people want to know what I dislike about cans, I have one thing and one thing only. What is behind me represents one-sixth of a minimum order. Welcome to Ask the Meat Maker, where I, Ricky the Meat Maker, answer your questions about meat making, meat drinking, meat brewing, and really, any question you're willing to send to me. Today on Ask the Meat Maker, you're going to hear mowing in the background. This upsets me for two reasons. One, I'm rather particular about these episodes and I don't like anything drowning me out. Two, excessive mowing is bad for pollinator health. Having wild flowers helps wild pollinators. We focus a lot on honeybees here, but there are lots of pollinators out there, and we need to care about all of them. Our first question this week comes from LP1961, who had seen some recipes that included pollen when making mead. And the question is, what does it do? Is it just a yeast nutrient? And the answer is, it actually does a surprising number of things. It changes some of the acid content, it makes for happier, healthier fermentation, and it's amazing. There is a whole very long article just written about this subject, not written by me, that we will link to below this video. Chris H. asked a cool question with a lot of answers. He wanted to know at what stage should fruit be when added to a fermentation? Now initially I thought he wanted to know at what stage of fermentation should you add fruit, which I'm pretty certain I've answered already and I've definitely written an article about which is linked below. But no, Chris wanted to know at what stage should the fruit be? Ripe? Underripe? Overripe? And the answer is, I think it depends A, on the fruit of course. Some things don't ferment well when underripe, they're rock solid and they have lots of starches, which are hard for the yeast to access. But it's more about what flavor profile do you want? Taste the fruit. If it's the kind of flavor you'd want in a mead, go ahead and add it. We got a very long email this week from Stephen Taylor. Not from, as I initially believed, Stephen Tyler, alas. But Stephen had an issue with his fermentation. Now I'm not going to tell you all the conditions of his fermentation, what fruits he added, but I want to talk about the difference between a finished fermentation, a fermentation that no matter what you do, your mead is done and is just waiting to rest and a stuck fermentation. In a stuck fermentation, the bubbling has stopped or slowed down significantly, like once every 30 seconds or less, but you still have sugar left over. Sugar can become alcohol. That is why it is stuck. Now, if your alcohol content is below 10%, you can shake it up, put more yeast in, let her go, see if your fermentation continues. But this is where Stephen stymied me. He seems to have a stuck fermentation, and then he continues writing, and it seems like it's dry. His real problem is he just wants more alcohol in it, and he wants it to be sweet. The answer, Stephen, pour in a little sugar, pour in a little vodka, call it done. Our last question this week comes from Nate, who is a home mead maker who would like to go pro, a commendable life choice, and wants to do so over the next five years or so, a commendable time frame. I cannot tell you the number of people who are like, I want to be a pro brewer, and I say, awesome. And they're like, I'd like to do it by like September, and I'm like, no. It takes a long time to transition from home mead maker to pro brewer of any sort. And he wanted to know how long I had been home brewing before I started the transition to professional. And the answer is a while, about eight or nine years, specifically making mead as well as other things. During that time, however, I also worked at a homebrew shop where I consulted with people about meads all over. And I worked with craft brewers. So I knew a little bit about tanks, coolant systems, and all of that stuff. Anyone is interested in going pro, don't be afraid to write to me. I'd love to share as much of my knowledge with you as possible. That's the last question for the week. I just need to send it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? 
Thank you, Ricky! This week's word is vinylite. Vinylite is an early solution to the beer can problem. You see, we didn't have problem putting beer in cans. We had problem keeping beer in cans, as the beer was corroding the metal. So back in the 1920s, they invented vinylite, which solved, initially, the problem. And over the last hundred years, we've come up with safer and safer, more effective can liners. Vinyl light, an early solution to a big problem. Our word of the week and the end of our show. Keep sending your questions, and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Cheers.